A cult classic is defined as something that is popular or fashionable among a particular group or section of society. Do you have anything, a game or a movie maybe, where if you mention it, there are only people who have never played it and those who love it? This series is just like that. Every time I mention it online, people are either confused or call it underrated. That's why I made this video, because the only reason it isn't more talked about is because nobody has ever heard of it. The best part about telling you about it now, all these years later, is now emulation is possible and the game is dirt cheap online or in a used game shop. So maybe you'll walk away with a new game to play, maybe something you really like. But enough about that. Welcome to the creation and tragic failure of Mortstorm. Revealed at E3 2005, the up-and-coming Evolution Studios, behind the World Rally Championship game series, revealed Motorstorm, an off-road racing game with a focus on carnage and racetracks with multiple routes, each suited for different classes of vehicle. The first trailer was criticised for being pre-rendered and likely not representative of actual gameplay. However, later, at the Game Developers Conference in 2006, an in-engine tech demo was shown off, demonstrating the vehicle destruction and physics. It was finally released in 2006 or 2007, depending on where you lived, as an exclusive launch title for the PlayStation 3. Welcome to Motorstorm. I'm gonna take you on a roller coaster. The game received positive reviews, landing an 84 on Metacritic, it earned praise for its cutting edge graphics and weighty car physics, however it was criticised for a shallow single player festival mode which had no narrative and had players earning medals from performance to earn entry to new races. Looking back now, the jump from PlayStation 2 graphics to PlayStation 3 is not the most noticeable, but the game is enjoyable and certainly a few hours of fun. It also had a large soundtrack of licensed music, mostly punk and techno. The weight of the seven vehicle classes is very noticeable, and the multiple routes in each track add replayability and variety to gameplay. Motorstorm also featured local and online multiplayer. As said, the graphics are not much above PlayStation 2, and the opponent AI is absolutely brain dead. The game features eight tracks, with four DLC tracks released later. The game also featured a boost system, which is worth mentioning, which would allow for extra speed and acceleration, but would need to be managed as to not overboost and have the car explode. The game sold approximately 3 million copies worldwide. Personally, I think Motorstorm is the weakest of the three PlayStation 3 games. It's still a solid title. I think vehicles feel too slow and the time to get back on the track if you explode or crash is way too long. Another problem I have is in the vehicle select. The game has to load in the model for each one which takes ages and is not worth the wait. Overall, an okay racing game. We were looking at getting beautiful parts of the world, and one of that is a wonderful part of the world. It's a place where people will want to go when they play their game, you know. We could have done this uh, in the shopping centre, but it wouldn't have been as good. With the advent of PlayStation 3, the last few years we've had a, an amazing vision of where games and movies can converge and take you to a new place. Following the success of Motorstorm, Sony acquired Evolution Studios in September 2007 and began development on a sequel. In March 2008, a short teaser for a Motorstorm game was shown off. At E3 that year, Motorstorm Pacific Rift was revealed with a new jungle setting.
Released in art in 2008, Motorstorm Pacific Rift was very well received and is probably the most widely approved Motorstorm game by far, having sold over a million copies. Pacific Rift retained many features of its predecessor, such as the festival mode and progression system, as well as adding many new features, a new vehicle class even, the monster truck, as well as a photo mode. The biggest improvement overall is the tracks, which not only are larger in scale, but also have much more variety. The 16 tracks total are split into four groups, earth, fire, air and water, and they include racing in a caldera, an abandoned sugar mill, an abandoned airbase and between lava flows. These new areas add much more variety, allowing for much more verticality, especially in the air zone. The new focus on natural forces make the game much more interesting. Not many racing games can have you total your car by driving it head on into a lava flow. The island, as it is called in game, is heavily inspired by Hawaii and a welcome change from the endless brown mud of Monument Valley. The game also features four player split screen co-op and online multiplayer, though the servers are long dead now. Extra depth has been added to the boosting system, as now environmental factors can affect the boost gauge. Driving close to fire and lava caused it to cool down much slower, while driving through water can cool your engine down. Pacific Rift currently has an 82 on Metacritic and an 8.1 user rating. Much like the last game, it also has a licensed soundtrack, consisting of mostly punk and rock. Custom music can be imported from the PS3, however. It also has probably the best intro video for any video game I've ever seen. Later on, two DLC packs were released featuring six new tracks and a bonus volcanic mode for base game tracks which featured more lava. An updated 3D version of the game was released in 2010 for seemingly no reason on the PlayStation Store. But where exactly could Evolution Studios and Motorstorm go next? In September 2009, Big Big Studios, which was bought by Sony around the same time they bought Evolution, released Motorstorm Arctic Edge, also called Raging Ice in Asia, a spin-off title released on the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable. It was released to positive reviews and was praised for managing to live up to the other Motorstorm games, despite being designed for weaker hardware. It maintains all the features of Pacific Rift, environmental cooling returns with deep snow and water cooling your engine, and the tracks still have that multiple route quality for increased replayability. Some new features are also present, such as the vehicle customization system, allowing you to customize stickers, paint colors, patterns, and even vehicle parts. Another feature also are ice bridges. Ice bridges work as paths only smaller vehicles can traverse. If a larger vehicle happens to drive across one, it collapses, then nobody can cross it. Very fun in local multiplayer, which is on the PS2 version. Both versions feature six player online multiplayer also. Another new feature is avalanches. If you happen to honk your vehicle's horn, snow can barrel down the mountain and engulf other races. It's a good concept, but it's nearly useless in practice. This is me trying to have one happen. In my opinion, Arctic Edge is better than the first Motorstorm game, but it's much worse than Pacific Rift. It also suffers the same problem as Motorstorm, as many tracks look the same, although white instead of brown. Although it isn't as bad, there are a few muddy tracks to break up the monotony. I'd say it's well worth a play if you happen to have a PSP or PS Vita. Arctic Edge is also the easiest Motorstorm game to emulate, more on that later. Meanwhile, Evolution Studios were hard at work on the next mainline Motorstorm game. Motorstorm Apocalypse was revealed at E3 2005, with the trailer featuring gameplay from the epilogue track from the single player mode. It showcased a lot of the destruction and how it would affect the gameplay. So far, the overall reaction seemed positive with many people looking forward to it. With the release date set for March 10th, 2011 in Japan, the future looked right for another insane racing game. However, in a sick twist of fate, the universe had different plans.
was the fifth largest earthquake in history. But you can only really understand the enormity when you see these pictures. An earthquake so strong it literally shifted the Earth's axis by about 25 centimeters. On March 10th, the exact release date for the game, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake hit the east coast of Japan, with the epicenter being just 72 kilometers off the coast. The earthquake triggered 40-foot tsunami waves, caused the accident at the Fukushima nuclear power plant, and killed over 19,000 people. Due to this very sudden and pretty spooky coincidence considering the game's content, the Sony decided to delay release in the UK, US, and the game was completely pulled and never released at all in Japan and New Zealand too because of a completely separate earthquake earlier in February. The game however did eventually get a release in Asia under the name Mortal Storm 3. Many other games were affected by the earthquake, especially so those about earthquakes, such as Zetai Zetsume Toshi 4, or as it is known in the US, Disaster Report 4 Summer Memories, which got delayed straight into the next console generation. Australia got Motorstorm Apocalypse on the planned release day of March 17th, but Sony halted any further shipments and pulled all advertising for the game due to recent events. The US finally got hold of the game last on May 3rd. Initial reception was lukewarm. The game received a slightly worse Metacritic score than the previous games, with reviewers praising the destruction, graphics and intense arcade racer gameplay. It did receive some flack for its mediocre story in generic brown environments. Now for my favourite part, where I get to gush about one of my favourite games of all time. Stay tuned, I'll tell you how you can play it yourself on PC. <laughs> Motorstorm Apocalypse is a one-of-a-kind game. It's one of those rare treats that simply has not been done again, although Split Second was kind of close. Motorstorm Apocalypse follows the Motorstorm organization, the ragtag group of off-road racer lunatics venturing into a Bay Area city which is totally not San Francisco despite what the Big Red Bridge will tell you, to race and party. Sound good? What if I said the city was evacuated due to an incoming earthquake and you get to race in the midst of the destruction? Interested now? The single player story mode is sorted into three campaigns you play one after the other, each following a different character's path through the two day Motorstorm festival. You'll follow a racer new to the festival, a seasoned member with a rivalry and the founder of Motorstorm who is voiced by Steve Blong, who you may recognise from everything you've ever seen. You play through each event once over the campaign and the events take place over nine areas with each event at a different stage over the course of the earthquake. They're all quite distinct now with night tracks, different routes and you get to see how the city is slowly destroyed over time. The locations themselves are all unique, featuring a seaside carnival, a suburb, a suspension bridge, the financial centre, the docks and the absolute best tracks in my opinion, the skyline tracks, which have you race over rooftops and through skyscrapers which is just really cool. Each story also has an intro and an epilogue point-to-point -point races to get to the festival in the intro, then get the hell out of the city as it is completely destroyed in the epilogue. Hey all, Scott here, and this is bad, real bad. The epilogue has you race to an aircraft carrier to escape, but you've got to be quick because it will leave without you. The campaigns are also sorted in difficulty level, for example the first campaign is on rookie, but the second one is on pro, so the AI does get harder over time. The roster of vehicles returns with a few new additions, the supercar, superbike, super mini and the badass chopper motorcycle, all of which can be customised down to paint jobs, parts, models and other unlockables. The overall gameplay of Motorstorm is mostly the same, tracks have multiple routes, environmental factors can cool or heat up your boost meter and the cars all feel weighty. One new addition is the ram, which allows you to use up a chunk of boost to jolt to the side, great for smaller vehicles to make turns faster and even better for heavier trucks to wreck your opponents. NPCs play a bigger role too. You'll have rioters throwing petrol bombs at your cars and a private military shooting at you, both of which can increase your boost and blow you up if you get hit too much. Feel free to run them over. However, by far, the coolest addition to Motorstorm Apocalypse are the incidents. During regular racing, tremors can hit, sometimes causing the track to collapse and distort, opening up new routes or closing off existing ones. You'll have to be quick with the wheel to avoid some. 
I won't show them all here, but about two thirds of all events have incidents and they all have excellent sound and visuals. They really have that scale of a disaster movie. I think it really makes the tracks feel like locations and not just roads with crap near the edges. They're quite scripted, but the first time around, they're always great fun. Also, I just think it's really cool when you race through collapsing buildings. I don't think you can really get that experience in any other game, especially the one with the ferris wheel and the tornado. That one's my favourite. The soundtrack composed for this game is also excellent. The soundtrack consists of a few main themes created by Klaus Badelt, an experienced movie composer. And those themes were remixed and sampled by electronic music artists into an intense, fast-paced soundtrack. Have a listen. Overall, it's a dubstep with a little bit of breakbeat and electronic dance thrown in there. It really fits the hectic gameplay. It's all on YouTube if that sounds like your jam. The game also had a very fleshed out online multiplayer mode with perk loadouts, lots of challenges, personalization options, unlockable cars, and a betting system which earns you more experience for winning. I say had because the online was shut down in 2018. As the online worked with a central server, it's likely it won't be back which is a real shame because unlocking different vehicle models and cosmetics is now impossible. Some DLC was also planned, and while two extra events and a new track based on the Alcatraz prison were released later in a free update, a collectible in-game trading card references an unreleased track set in The Heights, based on the iconic steep hills of San Francisco. The DLC was likely scrapped due to poor sales, given the game only sold around 500,000 copies according to VG Charts. Overall, I personally think this game didn't get the recognition it deserved and flopped because of unfortunate timing. There isn't even anything wrong with it either, except maybe an average story, ugly cutscenes, and a 30 frames per second cap. More about fixing that later. You have a few options if you want to play the Motorstorm games. If you already have a PS3, PS2 and or PSP, just buy the games, it's simple, easy and the games are quite cheap in second hand shops. If you don't have a PS3, you could try Apocalypse through PlayStation Now on PS4, PS5 or PC, but be warned that if your connection isn't good enough, you'll get some awful input delay. However, if you have a PC, you can use an emulator to have your PC replicate the console hardware. The catch, however, is you'll need much more processing power than the original hardware. You should be fine emulating PS2 and PSP with an average gaming PC, but RPCS3 the best PS3 emulator out there recommends a 6 core 12 thread CPU. The GPU isn't as important here, so your 3 grand RTX 3090 won't save you now. If your hardware isn't up to scratch, try emulating Arctic Edge on PS2 or even PSP if your computer really sucks. For the PSP, you'll want to use the European version, otherwise you'll end up with a void below your car. The PS2 version is preferable, as it runs at 60 frames a second natively and even has split screen on PCSX2, which is what you'll want to use to emulate PS2 and PPSSPP for the PSP. Head to their respective websites and get them set up. I'll link them below. If you need a hold of the actual game files legally, I'm afraid you'll have to dump them yourself. But if that's an issue, then I would lend you my copies if I could. It's basically abandonware right now and Evolution wouldn't see a cent of your money anyway, so don't feel bad about downloading them off their shady website. Don't tell the RPCS3 Discord though, they don't allow privacy. If you end up emulating the PS3 titles, be warned that you will need to fix quite a few issues. Thankfully, the RPCS3 wiki contains tweaks you should be using to get the best performance, and you'll need to squeeze as much performance as you can out of your machine. The RPCS3 Discord also has a bot that scans over your log files to check for any errors. You'll want to join that by the way. Check the description. RPCS3 also supports patches which help performance, as well as uncapped frame rates and disable processing power hungry PlayStation 3 MLAA anti-aliasing. Here's the lowdown on the three PS3 games, some game plan my setup with a Ryzen 5 2600. Firstly, you'll have to enable right colour buffers to stop bright bloom effects. 
do this on all three games unless you want to go blind. My eyes! <laughs> For Motorstorm, you'll just have to enable right colour buffers. Check the available patches too, there's one that uncaps the frame rate above 30. I managed to get 144 in some places, overall it's kind of all over the place. For Pacific Rift, you'll need to enable right colour buffers again, and also set the resolution scale threshold to 256 by 256 which will also fix the bloom. There's quite a few patches to choose from here, you'll want to disable motion blur in MLAA, but if your setup is struggling, get the variable FPS patch so the game runs correctly at lower frame rates. If you manage to run it well, feel free to disable dynamic resolution scaling for a little extra clarity at some points. For Apocalypse, you've got to set resolution scale threshold to 256 by 256 and enable color buffers again. Also, set the SPU block size to mega, sleep timer accuracy to as host, and also set the relaxed Z call sync to on. These should grant a little extra performance. With the patches, you should pick up disable MLAA, Disabling ambient occlusion and motion blur, however, are up to personal preference. If you feel you can handle it, disable resolution scaling and get the 60 frames a second patch. I should repeat that a PS3 emulation is very, very processor heavy, as you can tell by my computer struggling. However, this all works and RPCS3 even supports increasing the output resolution. It's possible to play all these games at 4K 60 frames a second, but right now I doubt the average person has that kind of hardware. It's a shame on the upside, in the future, when everyone has better processors, you'll be able to play all these easy peasy. So watch this space and remember when you upgrade your setup. You might have thought that after 10 years without an installment, Motorstorm wouldn't have any fans left. You thought wrong, there's currently a small discord of fans who love to discuss the game. The Motorstorm Festival Discord holds weekly time trials and occasionally plays Arctic Edge PSP online over the emulator. They even have a fan game currently in the early stages of development known as Project Stampede. It has a lot of promise, so be sure to check out where they're up to. There's also a few mods out there, mostly for custom libraries, especially this one by someone with great music taste, and also a rebalancing pack for Pacific Rift. I only really made this video because I don't think Mortstorm Apocalypse got a fair shot with consumers because of bad timing, as well as the whole franchise being a PlayStation exclusive. I think it deserves to be up there with Burnout under the 7th generation racing games. The whole genre of arcade racing titles has seemingly died now, but I don't think Motorstorm should be forgotten. In the future as computers improve, you could emulate all these games as easy as people emulate a PlayStation 1 right now. If you miss the arcade racer, or even if you just want to try something new, I strongly recommend the Motorstorm series. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a boat to catch. This video took about 10 hours of research, recording, editing, tweaking and thinking to make, and I just hope it was worth the effort. I even emailed some X Evolution developers, but none of them replied. I hope this video is an improvement from a green text video about a dinosaur dating simulator. I don't plan on making any more videos, but I could either make one on an alien shooting trilogy, or a jet fighter trilogy. Regardless, your likes and subscribes are greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.